please be seated. And um, I would uh, probably underestimate uh, if I said that, the t that just the temperature in a room just immediately becomes uh, something a warmer, uh, sweeter, and um, uh, just elevated when it's just the mood when we see children walking with the Torah. And we so desperately, especially this morning, need that encouragement. So our dear young participants, uh, you mean so much, your presence so much to us. And so we influence each other and we influence our Jewish development and it comes to us from many places and certainly community means so much. And uh, sustaining and loving our community uh, is a um, task of, that taken upon themselves of many volunteers uh, who make this place very, very precious and uh, special. So at, in our tradition here at Darhei Noam, uh, every year there is a selection of uh, Hatan Kala, uh, excuse me, Hatan and Kala. Hatan Torah, which is a traditional in uh, uh, Orthodox synagogues, you usually see, and this is, you know, would be uh, honorary, also honorary, and um, it, the, this honor kind of passes on from uh, person to person. But uh, here in the liberal circles, we have also something very special, and it's become an adopted and loving uh, minhag and uh, custom to us is Kalat Brishit. So this morning, our Kalat Brishit, sort of, you know, the, uh, this uh, very important place comes to and honored, to, uh, was selected our, one of our members, Miriam Bester. A loving face you know, and um, before I read, uh, Miriam, your extraordinary accomplishments, and there are only very few, and I have them committed them to paper, but I would like to say that I don't think in years knowing you that I have ever, ever um, seen you in a building or anywhere else, walked away after my interaction with you, that I did not feel at least 40% better about my day. There is calmness and there is self-possession and elegance with which you carry that we can only learn from. It comes to us because we're molded in a particular way, but it comes to us also from birth. It's like an ability that is given to you by the virtue of who you come from and what you have chosen to carry forward. So incredible affection to you, dear mayor, who is on Zoom and I'm pointing and facing several places because the camera is here, monitor is here, and as well as uh, your children and if your grandson is represented uh, here as well and uh, you hear his, uh, his sounds of his voice and that's very important. So Miriam Bester has been a member of Darhei Noam for more than a decade, a constant and welcoming presence to, at our services and events and a DN volunteer extraordinaire, yes. As well as being a, a member of the, and a past chair of Hesed Committee and the founder of HOPE groups, um, now led by Myra Shift and Elizabeth Mint of Cohen, a teacher needs students, we pass torch on. Miriam has organized and supported programs and in initiatives including Gabrielle's Boobies, okay, women and aging with Debbie Kavitz and Harriet Lampert, Suka panel project with Harriet Liebman, and you see these extraordinary panels in Suka, which is a, our staff who's never seen it, were Marvel, uh, you must see them. And their Hey Noam Book of Blessings with Shirley Segev. And fill a purse for a sister with Ilana Gloss. An expert at making people feel welcome and supported, Miriam coordinates Shabbat greeters, rides to shul, acts of kindness, and birthday calls for DN members, as well as collaborating with Rabbi Rina Arshinov on bereavement support. In the early days of the pandemic, and this is so precious, Miriam came up with a beautiful idea of COVID quilt for members to share quilt squares uh, conveying their lockdown experiences. Most recently, she has led a fun drive 
a fundraising program with Liam Gallant. And Miriam is currently acting as a new member liaison, one woman welcoming committee <laughs> for three new member families. Miriam excels at bringing people together and we're delighted to honor her as our Kalad Brishit this year. Uh, it is our pleasure, Miriam, to learn from you, to hear from you, and to understand how do are we molded, created, sustained, challenged, and evolve to give so much to others. Please welcome, we're eager to learn from you. Shabbat Shalom v'chag Sameach. Thank you, Rabbi Grimberg. And I meant to say to those in the room and those on Zoom. Sylvia and anyone else responsible for me standing before you today, thank you. I was very touched when I heard that I had been selected as this year's Kalat Bereshit. I know that our community is blessed with so many volunteers who offer their time, skill, and energy to make this place alive with activity. And I feel honored to be included in this group along with Joel. Joel and I were surprised to learn how similar our backgrounds were and that growing up, we lived one street apart for a while and went to the same shul. I was asked to tell the story of my journey to Dar Noam in about 10 to 15 minutes. Well, I can beat that. I turn right on Blue Forest, <laughs> left on Wilmington, and right on Shepherd, and here I am, three minutes. And now for the slightly more detailed version of my spiritual journey to Darche Noam. My mother, a Hungarian survivor of Auschwitz, met my Polish father, also a survivor, in post-war Europe. Each was looking for surviving relatives neither of them found any. They heard that survivors were being helped in DP camps, so they made their way to Steyr in Austria, where I was born. I think of it as something as a miracle that a woman who weighed 72 pounds at liberation was able to conceive and deliver a healthy baby. Am Yisrael Chai, the Jewish people survive. And so a Jewish neshama was born in the very neighborhood where just a few years earlier, the destruction of all European Jewry appeared most likely. I was named Miriam Liba after both my grandmothers. Eventually, my parents found their way to Toronto where my father's cousins had arrived well before the war. It was during a time when Canada was not eager to admit Jewish refugees, but relented for those of close family members. They found accommodation in a modest house shared by many families and tried to make the best of the situation. My brother, Sidney, was born shortly afterwards. He was named after both our grandparents, our grandfathers, Zisha Aaron. We never experienced the love and enrichment of our grandparents, aunts, uncles, or any first cousins, as all had perished in the Shoah. When it came time to observing Jewish traditions and rituals, my family's experience was like that of many others in similar circumstances. The struggle to survive in a new land, learn the language, find shelter, sustenance, and education for the kids took up all their available energy. Jewish traditions and rituals had to wait. In fact, the only affordable daycare space for me turned out to be in a Catholic kindergarten. I, of course, had no idea what that meant, and being an attentive and obedient child, learned all the hymn, hymns and all the prayers taught me. I can still recite many of the prayers which confirms how important early education is. <laughs> As time passed, 
our parents' situation improved and they could see the possibility of hope and renewal on the horizon. It was time to reincorporate traditions and rituals. Our new school became Eitz Chaim and the Catholic hymns were replaced by Brachot, Kiddush, Candle Lighting and Manishtana. We moved to the suburbs and joined the Orthodox Clanton Park Shul and from the outside appeared like a normal middle-class family. From the inside, it was more complicated. Our mother never spoke about her wartime experience. I later learned that this practice was quite common among Holocaust survivors. The trauma was just too great to articulate. My father, our father on the other hand, couldn't stop talking about it. As the years flew by, I found myself busy with studies, friends, and social life. I attended synagogue on Shabbat and Chagim, but I chose to put traditions and rituals I couldn't understand aside. Mayor and I met through a mutual friend and discovered that we had much in common. And when 1967 came along, as our centennial project, we got married. We worked hard at our respective careers, adopted a series of cats, traveled to Europe, and were generally quite busy and active. And then we had children. First David, and a couple of years later, Jordana. Now we felt the responsibility of providing a Jewish education. We enrolled them at Associated and were proud of their ability to recite the Hebrew alphabet and chant the Manishtana. When David turned 10, the words bar mitzvah started to crop up, mostly with our parents. What's the plan? What will he do? Where will it be? We lived in Thornhill at the time and just around the corner, literally, was a modest one-story conservative shul called Shar Shalom. It had a membership of about 200 families. We joined and eased slowly into our new role as synagogue members we learned about annual dues and building funds, donor boards, Kiddush sponsorship, and Yortzeit plaques. We remained members for over 25 years and became an integral part of that community. Then things started to change. The shul grew, rabbis changed, and debates began to surface regarding ritual practices. If a woman was given the honor of an aliyah, her husband was asked to take it. We were allowed to open the Aron. Some of us began to agitate for more egalitarian practices, while others were adamantly opposed. There were meetings and study sessions, that's right, Ezra, and lobbying and shouting. But in the end, things remained the same. Mayor and I began to consider other possible options. Reform shuls felt too different and the Nariver was a bit too far downtown for us. We were looking for a spiritual home and community where we could live authentically. And then we came across a small blue book called Exploring Judaism. It described a branch of Judaism that was as new to us as it was different. The words of Rabbi Mordechai Kaplan, such as Judaism is an evolving civilization, the past has a vote but not a veto, excuse me, God is the power within us that makes for salvation resonated deeply with us. Writing this is a lot easier than delivering it. The description of reconstructionist congregations was just what we were looking for. We didn't know we were reconstructionists. Mayor and I were delighted to find there was a reconstructionist synagogue in Toronto and we attended a Kabbalat Shabbat service. Although we were surprised by the venue, a cramped basement located on Hove Street. The warmth and reception we got from the people who were there, and especially from the rabbi, made us feel welcome. It was the first time either of us had met a female rabbi, let alone one who was pregnant. <laughs> By the time we joined almost 15 years ago, the congregation had moved from the Hove basement into this wonderfully reconstructed building we moved to Bathurst Manor. The little blue book was a reality at Dar Chay Noam. A wonderful rabbi, close community, lay involvement in creative and uplifting musical services, 
active social justice and adult education committees, Torah study, and a wonderful kiddish with opportunities for fellowship and making good friends. We had found our spiritual home and remain grateful to the founding members whose foresight and dedication resulted in the Dar Noam of today. One Shabbat following services, we were walking out of the sanctuary when I was approached quite informally by our then president, Lisa Cherendoff. She told me that she was aware that I worked as a chaplain and wondered if I'd be interested in utilizing my experience to run the mitzvah committee. We really had not gotten to know many people yet. I had no experience with Dar Noam committees, but I didn't want to say no right off the bat, so I told Lisa I would think about it. Of course, I ended up saying yes, and I'm so glad I did. It was a very enriching experience for me. In Psalms 119, it says, Mi kol malam dai hiskalti. From all who taught me, I gained understanding. At least that is my preferred interpretation of this pasuk. And indeed, I learned a lot and made wonderful friends, both those who worked on the committee and those who the committee supported. My suggestion to the board to change the name to Chesed was approved. I wanted to encourage acts of loving kindness rather than mitzvot or commandments. I'm very gratified by the many acts of chesed this committee continues to deliver to our congregation and beyond. Around the same time, I experienced a life-changing event at Baycrest. I was walking in the hall when through a doorway I overheard an elderly woman say, I need a doctor. A male voice replied, Ma, I'm a doctor. The lady repeated the same statement, but a bit louder. The man also replied, louder. Pretty soon, they were yelling at each other. It was an aha moment for me. Even highly educated people are not always knowledgeable about dealing with aging parents, especially those with dementia. The idea of starting a support group for our members was born. And so, after consultation with Michael Wharton, regarding a past group at Dar Noam, the HOPE group was launched, honoring our parents effectively, where members could share their challenges, receive peer support, and often actionable suggestions in keeping with the fifth commandment to honor our parents. One of the most meaningful paths in my spiritual journey here at Dar Noam occurred during a time of bereavement. When our mother passed away, my brother Sid and I sat Shiva in our home. We were so touched by the outpouring of support, the visits and nightly services conducted in our home by sensitive leaders really comforted us. So I approached Phyllis and became one of the Shiva service leaders. The work of sustaining a community is never done. In Pirkei Avot 216, Rabbi Tarfun tells us, Lo alecha hamlecha ligmor. It is not our duty to finish the work, but neither are we at liberty to neglect it. So as long as I can, I will continue to do whatever I can to support and sustain our spiritual home and chosen community here at Dar Noam. With gratitude to all those who worked with me, to Mayor for always supporting me and who couldn't be here today because of health reasons, and with heartfelt thanks for this honor, Shabbat Shalom, V'chag Sameach.